this is the third of the three quick tutorials I just I'm doing off the cuff here. Um, uh, and uh, you might have noticed that to record the other ones, I'm using this very wonky uh, FFmpeg command. So I just want to break this down. This is a very interesting way to do screen recording. So normally a lot of uh, screen capture utilities uh, on Linux like to use X11 grab. Um, there's, I mean, there's a couple um, issues with that. A, it's really slow, and uh, I mean, that's, I would say that's the biggest issue. Is that if you uh, are trying to capture 4K, uh, something above like Full HD, you'll notice that it'll really start to drop frames, and it won't be able to keep up because it's basically making all these X11 calls to keep grabbing the screen. Uh, this is using something called KMS Grab. So what this does is instead of talking with the software layer like X11 to read the what's on the display, this will straight up just grab the buffer from your GPU. So the, so the performance is higher, looks like it's getting about 16 right now, but it's still considerably faster. And you can see like, I, I, um, I was going to say, you can see how I can move my mouse around without lagging, uh, but you won't be able to, cause that's one of the limitations is that it usually will not grab the cursor, but it doesn't really negatively impact your remaining performance. Like X11 grab, you can see your mouse start to lag cause the whole X11 server starts to lag. But in this case, even if the video is dropping frames, it doesn't negatively affect uh, the normal usage. So what you can do is you just need to define a device. And in this case, I have two graphics cards. And you might say, why would you have two graphics cards? Well, uh, your integrated integrated iGPU uh, will get one, and then your discrete GPU will get a, another card. So depending on how they're structured, that'll usually be dev slash DRI, direct rendering interface, uh, slash card one or card zero. How many you have? If you only have the built-in GPU, uh, like a laptop, it'll be card zero. Um, before you run this, you're going to need to do, you're going to need to set property to FFmpeg. So, Nor most uh, normal applications do not have permission to yoink the GPU's output. Like, um, so you either need to run FFmpeg as super user, but I generally dislike running programs as super user. Set cap, cap sys admin plus ep to FFmpeg. Um, so once you run this, you will need to enter your password. All right. So going back here, the next thing I do is uh, after the card, give it a frame rate that you want. So in this case, uh, I'm aiming for 60. Uh, this is the maximum. It'll basically do whatever it can. Um, sometimes I found that it likes to stick to about half of this number. I'm not quite sure what influences it, but uh, dash F KMS grab dash RE is just so that, um, so the dash RE parameter is what you can put on inputs to make sure that they don't uh, try to, normally FFmpeg will read as fast as possible. And that's what you want. If I'm converting a 10 minute video from MP4 to VP9, for example, uh, from H264 to VP9, I don't want it to go, well, VP9 is a bad example. Say I'm converting from MPEG-2 to H.264. Uh, FFmpeg normally tries to go as fast as possible because if I have an hour-long video I've recorded, I don't want to wait an hour for it to do the transcoding. And codecs like MPEG-2 and uh, MPEG-4, H.264 are pretty fast these days, and you can definitely encode faster than real time. Um, but in this case, we don't want to go as fast as possible because we're trying to record from a source that's being generated. If you are having it go as fast as possible, that has the significant um, problem that your audio and your video will get out of sync because it's going to keep changing the buffers on the audio and video capture. In this case, I'm trying to record both audio and video. So um, anyway, you I put dash re and then you do just do dash i dash and that will tell it to read. Well, dash is normally to read from a pipe, but anyway, it'll read from the camera scrap this time. Next, I want audio. So for my audio, I do dash f also. Um, I'm only using also with pipe wire because Historically, you used to be able to do dash F also or dash F pulse to do pulse audio. And then your dash I could be. So you could either do dash F also and tell also you want to capture the hardware device. So HW 0 colon 0 colon 0, 0 colon 1 for the second part on your sound card, 1 colon 0 for the first part on the second sound card, so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, then you were limited to the hardware. You could also do dash F pulse. And that would record from pulse audio and you could do dash i default on whatever and then you could use pavo control to change what it's actually capturing uh, there was a single problem with that which is that the pulse audio capture was always terrible and it was slow and it would get out of sync so the better way to do it back then used to be dash f also and then you do dash i pulse so this would force it to use the pulse audio compatibility layer but magically you wouldn't get stuttering you wouldn't get the dropouts it would be faster um nowadays because I have pipe wire, I have the pulse audio pipe wire layer, and I have the jack pipe wire layer, I can technically do dash f pulse, and it'll still work. I can do dash f jack, and then give the jack name, it, give the jack input a name, and then just use qjack ctl with pipe wire to map it, that'll also work. Or you can do what I'm doing here, because mostly because legacy and I haven't changed the way I use this command in forever, uh, which is give it also, and then just 
make it record the pipe wire input. This is decently fast. Um, next, I have uh, hardware map equal derive. Uh, der device is equal to VA API. I have scale VA API. Um, so there's a couple of ways. So if you technically had a video that was being decoded by your CPU, and you wanted to encode it with VA API, you would do HW upload. So what that does is uploads the video from system memory, from the CPU essentially, to the GPU. So it'll push that over and upload it to the GPU. Similarly, if I have a video I decoded with VA API, and I want to encode it with a CPU-based encoder, I would have to do HW download, download the video from the GPU onto the normal system. Um, so in this case, so if I, if I wanted to use, for example, a normal filter, then uh, like the normal scale, you'd have to download it first from the GPU, then scale it on the CPU. But there's a better way. There's actually a scale via API filter. So I can just say scale via API. So this will this is capturing on the GPU because it's KMS crap. Then it's going to scale it also on the GPU. In this case, I'm scaling to 4K. Um, normally, it's because like, this is demo. Normally, this is set to 1920 by 1080. I usually scale to a quarter just to take up less space because... I mean, normally it's because I'm recording scratch stuff, basically. And then format equal NV12. If you're going to scale, you need to have the format is set to NV12. Otherwise, you're either going to try to, you're probably going to, it's probably going to try to record RGB, which is not going to work with the H.264 via API encoder. Uh, the video codec, normally you put like libx264, lib, libvpx vp9, libaom av1. Uh, in this case, we're going to use H.264 via API. Um, there are actually vp8, vp9, via API encoders. Uh, there's also, but uh, I'm using an older GPU. I'm using a Radeon RX 480, which uh, unfortunately doesn't only can do H.264 and H.265 encoding. So when I say VIPI in this GPU encoding, think of it like NVENC. So NVENC is NVIDIA's proprietary encoder. Um, NVENC doesn't work with VA API. VA API is the video acceleration API that's standard on Linux. It's very well supported by Intel GPUs and AMD GPUs uh, typically. Um, and for NVIDIA, you'll have to use the proprietary NVENC stuff. So if you have an AMD GPU, VA API is probably the more convenient of the two to use. All right. So I'm going to use the VA API encoder. And if you wanted to know what uh, what formats you can encode, you can always just type VA info, and this will give you the printout. For example, I can see that my GPU here can decode MPEG-2, which is used in DVDs traditionally. It can decode VC1. Uh, and it can decode H.264, constrained, main, high, and HEVC main, and main 10-bit, and JPEG, I suppose. So if you see a VLD, that means decode. If you look at the ENC slice, this will tell you what you can encode. So in this case, my GPU can encode H.264, constrained, main, high, and HEVC. The thing is, um, people will say, oh, well, why not use the HEVC encoder? Uh, a, I hate HEVC because licensing is a pain on it, um, whereas H.264 is... I think they lost that battle. I think it's basically free to use on the internet now. Um, and two, the HEVC encoder is pretty, um, not particularly good. At this, it basically, normally HEVC would let you get the same quality at half the bit rate. In this case, it's pretty much comparable because I think, I'm going to guess most of the engineering and hardware went into the H264 because that's more common. So anyway, I'm recording an H264 uh, with the VAP encoder. Uh, for audio, normally I'd record with libopus. I'm only realizing now that I have the command set to libvorbis um, with QA. Normally, I would record it with libopis and the bitrate set to... I mean, if you're recording only voice, opis is an excellent codec. It can go down to 32 kilobits a second mono and still sound perfectly good for speech. In fact, you can do 24 and it still sounds perfectly good for speech. Um, for music, I'd say anything above 96 sounds good with the codec. So it's a very, very, very aggressive codec, but it sounds fantastic um like listen to lib mp3 lane which is by the way like probably the best mp3 encoder these days uh lane at 128 sounds you can hear the artifacting opus at 128 you probably will not hear artifacting it's amazing and like early mp3 encoders at 128 sounded terrible um but anyway so i'm using libopus you can make this libopus qa uh is the audio quality in this case i'm using variable bitrate you can also do dash ba uh, B colon 8 set of bitrate, so you can force it to 128 kilobit, 160, so on and so forth. Uh, by default, this will record stereo because all says in stereo. Uh, so, yeah, LibOpus also works. Uh, QP, so this is for constant quality. So, there's a couple ways. Yeah, so 
normally um, I don't I have no idea if I release this I recorded two separate versions of my video encoding type video where I talk about constant bitrate variable bitrate one pass encoding two pass encoding constant read factor uh, constant quantization so on and so forth uh, I don't think I uploaded either version of those um, but anyway uh, the two ways so normally uh, CRF would be the best way because CRF can take into account the current complexity of the scene and human perception so like it knows that fast moving things you won't pay as much attention to um, normally I'd recommend using CRF but in this case we're using QP because the VAP encoder doesn't support CRF you can do constant bitrate or constant quality in this case I'm going for a constant quality um, dash Y because I was recording in the same minute and this is the recording output so I record to a folder called recordings screen cap and then uh, I'm using fish and then fish you just do to do like inline commands so it records the date plus Y M D dash dash H M if I run this uh, you can see what this does it basically just prints the, it prints the year month day hour minute and this is how I record my videos because it's very easy for me to sort through them later um, and that's all and now we can look at the printout and you'll see that it's been going fine for 12 minutes and we recorded 100 megabytes which interestingly is probably going to be better quality because it's recording at 4k at, I mean one megabit per second is very very aggressive but there's nothing really moving on screen uh, and it'll be way less based on the camera recorded in that meantime I hope you enjoyed this uh, this is a very quick look at how you can record your screen directly using KMS Grab. Hopefully you enjoy this. Maybe it'll come in useful. Uh, you'll definitely be able to get like 60 FPS H1080p recording for your games or whatever using this technique. Uh, so I hope this helps. Bye.